Welcome to our online service on Easter Sunday. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The collect for today. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Our opening hymn is See What a Morning. What a morning, gloriously bright, with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Folded the grave clothes, tomb filled with light, as the angels announced Christ is risen. See God's salvation plan, wrought in love, Born in pain, paid in sacrifice. Fulfilled in Christ the man, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. See Mary weeping, where is he laid? As in sorrow she turns from the empty tomb Hears a voice speaking, calling her name It's the Master, the Lord, raised to life again The voice that spans the years Speaking life, stirring hope, bringing peace to us will sound till he appears for he lives Christ is risen from the dead one with the father ancient of days through the spirit who close faith with certainty Honor and blessing, glory and praise to the King, crowned with power and authority. And we are raised with Him, death is dead, love has won, Christ has conquered. And we shall Christ is risen from the dead. Our Gospel reading for Easter is from John chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, 
also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nobody was ready for this. Nobody had really listened. Or if they listened, they hadn't understood what Jesus meant when he was talking about his suffering and death and then adding, and after three days, rise again. They couldn't hear it, that little vital note of hope. They could only hear the bad stuff. And so... On that early morning, which would turn out to be the first day of a new world, they weren't ready. They didn't know what in heaven and earth was happening. How could they? And how can we understand this game-changing event, which we call the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Perhaps understanding in the sense of getting our heads around it is impossible to understand the resurrection would be to have it neatly packaged in a box for us to open and examine at our leisure it would be like trying to capture god to define god fully and finally whatever we ended up with couldn't remotely do justice to the astonishing mystery that overwhelmed Mary and Peter and the other disciple on that first Easter day. We are told that the other disciple saw and believed but did not yet understand. And if that other disciple was John, the gospel writer, then he spent, we imagine, many years processing, digesting, reimagining his Easter experience before coming to an understanding of it. And that understanding was nothing like a, a doctrinal statement or an intellectual proposition. It was an understanding rooted deeply in his heart and mind and soul. What mattered to John was his experience of the resurrection as a reality, and everything flowed from that. And we, of course, know the story. And yet, of course, the story isn't over. We are the story. And although we have talked and prayed and sung and wondered so much over the years, still the Easter story has the power to surprise us. Still we are not fully prepared. 
for the power of God to bring new hope out of despair, new life out of death. It is, and it should be, strange and wonderful. We should be still shaking our heads and asking, how can this be? How can the power of love, something seemingly so fragile, so ill-equipped for a ruthless world like this, turn out to be the one truly indestructible thing? How can love win? Well, our experience of God may not match up to the overwhelming impact of meeting Jesus newly risen from the dead. But I believe we can see the resurrection in our lives. Every time there is forgiveness and reconciliation, every time someone forgets about themselves because all that matters is the need of another, every time justice is proclaimed and the poor and the downtrodden are championed, every time a fearful heart dares to trust again. What we're being shown is the power of love to make a new world. It isn't here yet, this new world, not fully, but if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we will notice it and we can be part of it. And we see it most clearly when there is a cost to love and yet it is given. You may know the story of Maximilian Kolbe. He was a Polish Catholic priest who on witnessing 10 inmates of Auschwitz being condemned to death by starvation and hearing one of the 10 cry out, my wife, my children, volunteered to take his place. On one level, Kolbe's sacrifice achieved very little. One man was saved, ten still died, including Kolbe himself. You could say, what was the point of that? But this story has continued to intrigue and inspire. This sacrifice has a power that can't be explained away. Who knows what he was thinking and feeling at that moment, but... My best guess is that Father Maximilian Kolbe was so deeply immersed in the reality of the resurrection that he was able almost instinctively to make this costly movement towards another in their time of need. He was not afraid of death because he was so profoundly convinced at every level of his being that Jesus Christ has conquered death. He knew that death is not the ultimate reality. When we know this, not just intellectually, but in our hearts, in our guts, then we are free to live without fearing death. And we are free to love without stopping to count the cost. You and I are not Maximilian Kolbe, and we're certainly not Jesus Christ. But as the song we've just sung says, we are raised with him. Or in an older hymn, Christ is risen, we are risen. Through no merit or achievement of our own, we are included in this new life, this risen existence. Not only when we die, but now. We can begin to know in ourselves and to see in others a life and a hope that nothing can ever take from us. Like those unready friends of Jesus on the first day of resurrection, we can be surprised by joy. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
So we come to a time of prayer. And in these prayers, when I say, Lord, hear us, our response is, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Father, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all Christian people that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who at this season are receiving in baptism your son's new life by water and the Spirit and for all who have been baptised in his name. Dying with Christ, may they, may we, know the power of his resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all whom we know and love, both near and far, our families, our friends. May their eyes be opened today to see the glory of the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who suffer pain and anguish, whether of body, mind or spirit. Grant them the faith to reach out towards the healing wounds of Christ and be filled with his peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember before you those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We thank you for their lives and for the many different ways in which they have shown us something of your love, your truth and your eternal life. Unite us with them in your undying love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Join our voices, we pray, Lord God, to the songs of all your saints in proclaiming that you give us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray now together in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our second hymn is... Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. <laughs> Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory Thou our death hast won Angels in bright raiment Rolled the stone away Kept the folded grave clothes Where thy body lay Thine be the glory Risen, conquering Son, endless is the victory Thou our death hast won. Lord Jesus. 
Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now liveth, death hath lost its sting. Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou o death hast won. No more we doubt thee, Glorious Prince of Life, life is not without Thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through Thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to Thy home above. Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou o death hast won. A moment of quiet before a blessing for Easter. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon each one of you and all those you love, this Easter day and forever. Amen. Go well, have a wonderful and joyful Easter. Until we meet again, goodbye.